Okay. There we go. So welcome to Let's Talk PR. Um, I think many of you know Paul. Um, he's hopefully many of you have um, some events and happenings going on this spring where you want to get the word out to the community. So um, here at the Cultural Alliance, we work hard to put together roundtables and um, professional development opportunities for everybody um, in arts and culture and for creative leaders in the community to help uh, feed your growth so you can all continue to thrive and do well. Um, you know, we do this for the general public and also for our members. I think many of you here are already members, but if you're not a member, um, I'm going to put in my email address in the chat and um, reach out to me so I can go over the many benefits we have to uh, being a member here at the Cultural Alliance. Um, you know, we're here to support you, to advocate for you, and um, we always appreciate feedback because, you know, this is why we're here. Um, so tonight, um, Paul is going to talk about uh, public relations and best PR practices. He has a lot of experience. I'll let him introduce himself, but he's, uh, he's our go-to at the Cultural Alliance as our board member. He does all of our PR, and I am so very thankful <laughs> <laughs> for him for that. Um, so with that being said, I think we can just get started. So yeah. I will just lead lead it into you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm very happy to be part of uh, the Cultural Alliance and to be able to do this for anybody who um, is interested today. So welcome. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen. My uh, message says host disabled participant screen sharing. Host. Disabled participant screen sharing. Host disabled. Oh, okay. For the for the participant to square this yeah. to share the screen. I yeah. see what you're saying. I would it help you? I have it up here. Would you yeah, want you me to I can it. share my yeah. screen mm -hmm. and then kind That's of fine. go through it that way? All right. I think that'll be easier. Yes. And can you let me make yeah. sure you can see it? How's that? There you go. Perfect. Good. Yep. All right. You may, let me know may, when to move on to the next. I will. And there may be some that need to be a little bigger. I'm going to show some examples. <clears throat> but okay. I'll them too. So <clears throat> we're going to go through from the next page. Uh, Press, we're going to start with press releases, because I think in my experience, if you get a good press release, even if you don't use the information to send out to the media as a formal press release, that uh, gives you, uh, brings together all the information you need to do all the other things you uh, need to do, all the other information you need to share at different places. Because probably everybody knows you can take a, something out of your press release, put it in social media. You can flip the press release on your website as is, or use it to uh, create another type of communication, a blog or something else that would go on uh, your website. I'm gonna talk about how to pitch them to media. And I'll talk a little bit about who I am, just so you know at the beginning here. The, uh, and I have uh, places where, Everybody can ask questions and uh, so that there's plenty of uh, information back and forth, okay? Uh, I have been getting paid to write since I was about 20. And uh, I'm a much better writer now than I was when I was 20 and have been um, honing my craft for a long time. I was the editor at the News Times for 10 years. Before that, I was a reporter and various other editors. If you're not from Danbury, the News Times was, is the daily newspaper that covers this region. And uh, after they kicked me out of the News Times, I came to WestCon and they uh, offered me the job of public relations 
director, which I snapped up and have been here ever since. I, uh, I'm working right now in the president's office. I do a lot of communication. So I have done a lot of um, press releases and communications with the news. Of course, I was on the other side when I first started out, out of college um, uh, as a news person. And uh, when the my new boss at Westcon, when I was hired here, my boss brought me to my new office, handed me the key and said, okay, uh, there you go. And I realized I didn't really have a great idea of what a PR person does, my new job. So I sat down and kind of deconstructed what newspapers look for, what I had looked for as an editor and reporter for a long time. And uh, what reporters like and media people like is for the PR person to hand them a full story as is so they don't have to work too hard on it. And with names of people to talk to, quotes from those people, uh, a photograph or some kind of image is good. If you do those kinds of things, you'll be, um, you'll get into uh, the media that you choose to uh, send your press release to. <clears throat> now press, everybody I think has heard of the five W's, who, what, why, when, where. Uh, that's what makes, that's what news reporters actually sit down and think about when they write. Do I have the who, the what, the why, the when, and the where? And if I don't have it, can I explain it to my editor why I don't have that W? Uh, and if the reporter has those five Ws, you'll have at least a, a pretty good news story. So your press release should have the five Ws too. Uh, and they'll, that'll all come together. But if you think about it and actually think about it, uh, edit yourself, you will um, not forget any of them because it's easy to, especially if you're not uh, a writer, if you're not writing all the time, it's easy to forget some of those things. <clears throat> and if you just think five W's, that will remind you. There's some other things that I think are good for uh, press releases and news stories and basically all writing or most writing, unless you're writing a novel. Uh, these are the, some things that you should think about. Short sentences. Uh, I don't, don't I, uh, I won't give you a number of words that a sentence should be, because some should be shorter, some should be a little longer, but a sentence normally, or ideally in a press release would have one idea per sentence. If you get into comma and, and get into the second idea in your sentence, it's probably too long because you want, uh, when you're sending a press release to media, you want a reporter or editor to be able to read it, understand it quickly and decide whether they're gonna run with it or not. And you don't want anything to get in their way. It's the same for news reporters or any writer. You don't want something to get in the way of the reader. You want them to understand it right away. Uh, one of my pet peeves is cliches. You don't, mm, it's very easy to uh, say, oh, I was pleased as punch, or I'm so excited, or et cetera, et cetera. You can all think of cliches that we have all written, myself included. The key is to go through the second time and say, oh, that's a cliche, I'm gonna take that up. Because cliches, most often don't add anything to the real story. They just take up space. You wanna make this, as one of my editors said, tight, bright, and gutsy. Make sure your reader understands what's in it and don't have a lot of extra stuff. Quotes are important though. Quote is somebody speaking in your press release or your story. Uh, it's uh, important for a couple of reasons. One, it's a good way to add information. And also people speak slightly differently then they write. So it breaks up the uh, story that you're writing or the press release so that it gives people a reader another uh, way into the story you're trying to tell them. So again, if you're putting on an art show, don't say, I'm so excited to do this art show. Say, uh, this is my third show 
I, since I uh, graduated from WestCon or Western Connecticut State University, I'm um, going in different directions. This is what I hope uh, visitors will see, viewers will see in my show. And you're getting the theme here that it's not real fancy. You're not putting a lot of bells and whistles on it. You wanna be plain spoken and clear. When you've got your five W's, you think you have a rough draft with your five W's and your quote, and it's ready to go, make sure somebody else reads it, all right? Beg them to be harsh with you and say, geez, I don't understand this. Uh, you've got to rewrite this. You can make the final decision. Maybe they're wrong, but if you pick the right person, they'll say, I, this doesn't make any sense. I can't figure it out. I've read it three times. We have to rewrite this. So don't get uh, upset with your reader. Thank them uh, and um, do what they say most of the time. Uh, I do that too. Everybody needs an editor because you see things differently when you're um, the person who's reading it the second time sees things that the person who's been reading, writing and rewriting it and spending an hour or more on it does, doesn't, isn't gonna see anymore. <clears throat> so value that. And the key for you and your reader is, does it make sense to the five W? Do I understand the five W's? If I wanna see this, where do I go? What time is it? What day is it? Um, where is it? Who's doing it? Uh, and Ideally, you'll say, why? And does anybody have any questions at this point? It's all clear and understandable. Okay, Jonathan Wynn has a question. So my question concerns the um, images that you mm. include with a, with a press kit. Um, so one of the great catch 22s for theater is that um, newspaper people in particular want production images, um, but the deadlines are such that uh, if we gave them production images, the show would be over by the time they went to press. Mm -hmm. um, so we generally uh, plan a rehearsal early in the process where the costumes are at least on the actors and, and we trump something up. Um, I guess my question is, is there a better plan than that? For theater, there probably is not. It's great to have the actors in the costumes. Uh, the Wherever you have it published will love that. The people running the site will love it. And it will definitely bring you more eyeballs, right? Readers uh, will look at it more, will be more likely to look at it than if you have a series of headshots of just the actors not in costume. I know it's difficult. We do that here at WestCon uh, and, um, it's a very tight deadline. The, but what you bring up is an excellent point. Try to um, bring, try to provide an excellent photo or at least one that's not fuzzy. Uh, make sure the pic, it has enough pixels. I'm not an expert on that, but uh, I think most cell phone, modern cell, the most recent cell phones uh, do a good job of uh, taking pictures. You'll know it's uh, good enough for publication online or in on, on paper. Uh, and of course, regular cameras, if anybody's using a Canon or whatever, Nikon, they, uh, those are good too. If you have a someone who's experienced in photography, you'll get what you need. Can't, the photos will be in focus. It's also a good idea, and I'm sure you do this, put the names of the people who are in the photo uh, with the photo when you send it. You can just put another line, caption information, uh, so-and-so, left to right, so-and-so, so-and-so, and so-and-so. One that, that reminds me that if you have a, a photo where you have 20 people in it, no one is going to publish uh, the names of all the people. Just say, uh, this is art camp at um, wherever, uh, the participants in art camp, uh, and that will be good. Then people can look at it and find their own photo. 
That's mainly what that information is for, right? For theater, you want people to go see the production. For uh, publicizing art camp, you want people to see their photo that, at art camp and keep it in mind to register again next year or the next camp. So it is good to think about what you, the purpose of your uh, press release is. Um, it's either an event or often usually it's an event or you're publicizing some good, some good um, works like here at WestCon, we publicize the good works of students, professors, as well as other things that we do. And among the good works is the theater, music, presentations, and things like that. Okay. Are we good, Alice? All right, so I'm gonna give you an example of a press release that we wrote here at WestCon, just to show you where the um, uh, five W's are uh, and what we want to have go into uh, a press release, a pretty standard press release. You always have a headline, right? It should, you should try to make it on one line, not three or four or five lines. Um, mm. So John Wynn asked about how do you offer press tickets in a press release? Uh, I would put, what I do is put, well, there's a couple of ways, but you can put at the end of the press release, note to media in capital letters, Press tickets are available at however you present them. You could also send a separate uh, message right after you send the press release if you're afraid they don't pay attention, enough attention, uh, and they might print it uh, or publish it somewhere you don't want it. You can send a second email that says, uh, hello media, I just sent this last, uh, uh, um, press release about the, the upcoming theater. <laughs> Jonathan says he's had people publish it, which is not good. So I would send an, a second email that right after you send the first one, the first one with a press release saying, note to media in capital letters and in bold, press tickets available, please do not publicize. And hopefully that would uh, uh, do it. If you know somebody so many places have lost their reviewers now that in the old 10 years ago or 15 years ago, you could pick up the phone or email directly to the reporter who does the reviews and say, hey, I've got your press tickets. Here's the press release. But now it's different because they don't have uh, regular people doing press reviews, uh, theater reviews very often. If you have that relationship with somebody, and we'll talk about that a little bit more um, later, uh, do that, call them or email them directly. So we've got this press release here, a headline, WCSU Pioneer's new MS, which is master's degree in master's of science in Homeland Security degree program. It's not the most uh, scintillating headline, but it is accurate. Uh, Western, I'll read it. Western Connecticut State University announced that it will offer the only graduate program in Homeland Security in the Connecticut State Colleges and Universities, CSEU system, beginning in fall 2022. So we have who? Western Connecticut State University, uh, Homeland Security program, what? and the when, fall 2022. A little more detail, the new Master of Science in Homeland Security degree is unique to the area and will be offered as an online program consisting of 36 hours and a capstone project make, taking most successful candidates about two years to complete. So there's a little more what. Often you have many uh, versions of each W, several versions of what and who, uh, as you'll see in here. <clears throat> The whole thing about being unique to the area is our own internal publicity because the professors 
who I love. Professors are the backbone of everything we do. I'm not criticizing them, but they are very, in this case, proud. Oh, we're doing something new, which really most readers, it doesn't matter. Um, but we threw it in because the professor is running it, read, has to read the article before we put, send it out to media and he wanted that in. And you may find that too. We try not to have a big ego in the uh, PR office. According to Dr. Hassan Arslan, who is a WHO associate professor, the program is designed with total interactive capabilities for instructors and their students. A quote, this includes instructional lecture videos, discussion boards, theory-based and data-driven research papers, scenario-based assignments, and completion of independent study programs offered by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> Excuse me. To me, the most important information in that quote is U.S. Department of Homeland Security. This is a, uh, that's who will be hiring our graduates for the most part, not entirely. <coughs> police officers can, police departments can hire them too. And the FBI, et cetera. Uh, next page, Alice. Yes, we have a few questions here. Oh, um, good. Regarding cliches. So mm -hmm. instead of saying we are excited to present, should somebody say we will present? Yes, please, yes. Okay. And should the press release be in the body of an email or as an attachment? Uh, just to be doubly sure, I try to do it both so that it's easy to read in the e -E body of the email. Um, but sometimes uh, things get in the transmission, things don't show up every once in a while quite the way you want them. Not, not They aren't miswritten, but a comma gets misplaced or something I've found. So I try to uh, just attach a copy as well of a Word document, or it could be a PDF if you want. So you could do both, I'm just clarifying. Yeah, okay. A, a Word document or something where you can copy and paste out of it a little more easily than a PDF is probably better for <clears throat> reporters and editors who are probably juggling a lot of different things. If they like what you have, they want to, they make a decision right away to put it in wherever uh, the publication is. They can do it right there. And if you can make it easy for them, that is good most of the time. Let's say transposed paragraphs or something, which sometimes happens. Okay, we're all set, that's it. Okay. So another quote, the DHS deals with emerging threats from terrorism, cybersecurity, et cetera, et cetera. All of these threats require critical thinking and problem solving skills. So through a data-driven instructional approach, the WCSU program aims to teach graduate students to develop solutions, et cetera, et cetera. The important part of this is that it is in a quote, the professor is an expert speaking. It's not uh, me speaking as the PR writer. Uh, it's important where you can to um, show that what you're writing is, uh, or why it's important. This guy's been studying this and has a background in it, was to be teaching the masters in science. And so he does, we can imply that he knows what he's talking about. He does in fact. And so it's better coming from his mouth than written outside a quote. Finally, you have a call to action. A call to action and a press release is, come see the theater production or the art program or something like that. Uh, in this case, we're saying, this is the re gonna be the result of the uh, program. It's students are gonna get jobs. Um, Probably most of them are what we call non-traditional students. They've already graduated with a BA, BS and something, and they're going back to school. Maybe they're a cop right now and they want to uh, extend their education or their uh, learning. So uh, that's what we're pitching to them. It's a call to action saying, almost saying literally, hey, call us now, sign up. And it does have, 
I cut it out of here, but it did have the contact information for uh, the professor and just the university in general. So on the next page, we'll see how I set up or we set up each um, press release. It's, you always have the same header, we call it, right at the top. It says, this is a press release. For immediate release is a kind of jargon of the news business. Uh, it identifies media people realize, oh, this is a press release. <clears throat> we aren't ordering them when to uh, publish it. We are saying it is available immediately right now. So this is how we do it. You can take this for your own press release. There's nothing uh, unique about it. You put the date on it, so just because we do. You put a contact name. And in this case, we have two. Direct phone lines, direct emails, so that a reporter or editor, if they have a question, can call you as soon as they need to. and. Um, ask the question so that you are helping them. My job as a PR person is to help the media. They don't appreciate it. They think they do all the work. The stories that they publish that are based almost entirely on our press releases, our photos that we take, the quotes from people that we provide to them or that uh, uh, we tell them who to talk to. Uh, we do all that work for them. They do less of the work, but they take all credit for it. And that's what I did when I was a reporter and editor too. So I get it. It's okay. I'm not upset about it. You'll see the headline. This is the beginning of the press release. The headline. This was a speaker named Granny D who came to Westcon a long time ago. You don't have to have a subhead in italics, as, uh, but you can if you want to. And then you have the dateline, which is the, where you're from, Danbury. If you're a statewide thing, you can say Connecticut, dash, M dash, and then you start the press release. And at the end, could you go back to that? Oh, sorry. Yep. That's all right. At the end, we always put it on the end of a Westcon press release, the same little four line memo uh, on each one that just says, hey, this is what Westcon is. Uh, we're branding ourselves a little bit. <clears throat> I'm a PR person, not a marketer, but they do um, overlap. And this is just a little marketing thing that uh, every once in a while, someone will read and say, oh yeah, Westcon's not so bad. I could send my kid there or I could go there for the Homeland Security thing. Uh, one point I wanted to make is that you'll notice this whole press release about Homeland Security. There's nothing grand about it. It's a big deal to us. Uh, we think many students will uh, uh, enroll to take this course and it'll be a good course. But uh, we didn't say this will change your life or mm, this is the best thing since uh, you've ever seen or anything like that. We just laid out the facts, the five W's, and let people decide. The purpose of this press release, the Homeland Security one, is to reach people who may be thinking, oh yeah, I would like to take a, uh, I would like to take that program. So as I said, they're probably adults out of school, graduated already, um, who come across it, or they'll see it on our, on our various platforms, electronic platforms, but we're, uh, we're trying to reach people who don't need a lot of convincing. They're already saying, well, what's the next uh, point in my career gonna be? And uh, this would appeal to them. And it's okay to not be flowery, right? That's what uh, uh, I think some PR people get too flowery and they just don't let the story tell itself. In this case, the story is what it is. Uh, no one in my family is gonna sign up for Homeland Security uh, Masters of Science and they'll read right past it no matter where they see it. But there are plenty of people who want that MS in it, uh, 
uh, Homeland Security and uh, will reach them. Okay. All right. So you've got your press release. I'll just back up one point. Uh, I've been writing a long time. I in school knew I liked to write, in high school and even before. And uh, that's why I got into newspapering. I was on the writing side. Some people get into newspapering because they're on the reporting side and they really love confronting people and digging up the dirt. And I always had to mm, convince myself, take three hours to give myself the pep talk before I go you know, uh, confront somebody about something they were doing wrong. That wasn't my favorite thing. The writing and telling the story was my favorite thing. So newspapering and PR comes kind of naturally to me. If you, many of you will say, oh, I hate to write or I'm not a good writer. And I'll tell you, uh, it's not true that you're not a good writer. You are, everybody can be a good writer. Everybody can write a sentence. Everybody can write a paragraph and everybody can write a press release. You may not like to because it is does take mm, effort and you may not be the kind of effort you wanna do, but you can do it and it won't take forever. You just have to sit down and start. And um, you know, just because you had a bad teacher in elementary or middle or high school who said, oh, you're not a good writer, which happens, uh, don't listen to them anymore. You can do this, all right? So you've got your press release, somebody's read it, it has no cliches, it's all the punctuation's all good. Um, and it's in your hands and you wanna know what to do with it or it's on your screen. <clears throat> so one of the things you wanna do is send it to media. When I first joined the News Times, the News Times was a big deal in town. Every, not everybody, a lot of people read it. Even if they didn't buy it, they read somebody else's copy. So a lot of the stuff that appeared in the News Times was spread throughout the region. It was a good place to put information that you wanted other people to know. All newspapers, well, except the New York Times and maybe the Washington Post, have are something else now. Um, they have few less paid uh, subscribers. You can get part of the paper for free online, but not all of the stuff. They hide stuff behind a paywall. And um, it's, and there are fewer reporters, right? When I was the editor, I had 15 news reporters and a bunch of other people who were uh, clerks and sports reporters and all that. Now they have three or four report news reporters covering this region. So they don't have as much time to do stuff. That's why it's important to give um, them uh, the least work possible. Give them a press release, they can say, oh yeah, I like this, it's going in the paper or uh, whatever media you're talking about. There's a lot of online only media too. So we'll start with the idea that, well, you know, I know people at the News Times and other media around. So I call, I write to them specifically. But if you don't know the people in the media specifically, you can find them. You do the about page online and it'll show who the editor is of the newspaper or the online um, media or the magazine. There are a lot of magazine, uh, regional magazines around that do events, including the Connecticut magazine. Uh, so you look for how they want to get information. Some of them are, uh, some of the bigger publications will have calendars and they'll say, if you're sending calendar items, fill out this here. And uh, you can also probably attach the press release you have if you want. But if they don't have room for that, at least the who, what, where, and why, and when of the press release, you can transpose onto the screen uh, for the calendar item that they will run. And there's value to that. If you think there's a good chance or you're trying to pitch it as a story, uh, and there's no reason not to do that. Try to find a reporter or editor by name. They often, publications often list 
the names of reporters. If you've got a business story, look for the business editor. If you're covering a story in Bethel, look and see if they have a name of a reporter who covers Bethel specifically. Then they'll put the um, email address there and you can send it to them. Sometimes TV stations, which are very hard to uh, uh, pitch stories to, often the local TV stations often have a submissions page where you fill in your name, you put in the copy, and uh, then generally I never hear from them again. Uh, that's a good place where if you do know a reporter or an editor of a TV station, call them directly. Um, you may have met them somewhere at a event that they happen to cover. Out here in the western part of the state, it's a little tougher because they don't like to drive out here from New Haven and Hartford for one story. So it, um, they're, it's harder to get them to agree to cover a story or an event for us. Mm. Um, so you write the, you have the press release, it's on your computer and you write an introductory email <clears throat> that can be very short uh, and don't beg or anything like that. Just say something like this. Hi, John, please consider for publication the attached press release about the baby giraffe born yesterday at the Main Street Zoo. I've attached a photo too. Now, you know, if you have anything to do with a baby giraffe, you'll get stories coverage about it. You'll have plenty of coverage, including from the TV stations. Most of us, most of the time, are not that lucky uh, just to have that kind of thing happen. But um, uh, it's the same approach, right? If you write about a baby giraffe, you know you'll be golden for next week. People will be calling you, it'll be great. And every once in a while you get a story like that, or you're producing a th something in a the theater that uh, will get uh, that kind of attention. Okay. Can I ask a question, Paul? Please. Yeah. Does the, would the press release differ if you're writing to a TV station or to a newspaper or, you know, publication because it is so different? Do they want more flowery language or something more dramatic or it, it doesn't matter either way? Nope, it's, that's an excellent question, but it, I do the same thing for every media outlet I send it to. They can add their own flowery language if they, if they want. You know, a newspaper will publish these days the press release that you send to them with the photo if you have one. They, that didn't used to happen 15 years ago either. You, we, we wrote every press release, we interviewed people on our own. Now it just goes right in the paper or the publication, which is good for PR people. TV people do have to rewrite or they do have to rewrite because it's a uh, different media or medium. So uh, that usually takes care of itself. But who, what, why, when and where is always has to be in there or should be in there and Another point you suggest is it doesn't have to be long. You don't need it to be long. Five paragraphs, if you can tell a story in five paragraphs, that's okay, that's good. Media people don't wanna spend a lot of, they will not read three pages of a press release. It just won't happen. Okay. Including about the president, astronauts, the Dalai Lama, it just, they don't, won't do it. I didn't do it either. I looked for the five W's and then made up my mind. Uh, jo Jonathan so, Wynn is also asked, so in the body of an email is a foul. I have deliberately, deliberately, uh, <laughs> delivery, I can't say for some reason, problems when I attach a PDF. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh, is it not okay? Like, is not a good thing to do it in the body of an email? Is that like not good practice? No, you can do that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, in addition to every once in a while, it doesn't, the stuff I want to show up doesn't show up. Sometimes it's harder to copy uh, an email, copy the wording of an email, highlight it, copy it, and put it into a Word document. Um, funky stuff happens. So um, that's why I try to put in a, try to attach it too. <coughs> but put it in the body of the email. And if you can attach it, attach it. If you can't, it's okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Mm -hmm. So I talk a little bit about relationships with local media. It is, you will get more coverage if you um, have a relationship with a reporter. At WestCon, uh, I know all the four reporters there, uh, they sometimes have people come in from Bridgeport, et cetera, and I don't know them, but I know the core reporters and who cover Danbury and the region uh, around Danbury. And so I do call them and email them and say, hey, I've got this great story. Every once in a while, I don't even write a press release. I say, uh, this is happening tomorrow. Somebody's coming tomorrow. And um, uh, I thought you might want to be here or something like that. Uh, most of the time, almost always, so it does have a press release. I send it to them specifically instead of to the news staff at newstimes.com. And uh, because it just gets more attention and you wanna get them thinking about you in a positive way. So if you meet a reporter, ask them their name, track them down, figure out what their email is, or you can ask them for a card, they should have a card, and then call them next time. If they wrote something about you that you liked, your art show or whatever, um, uh, call them again. They may not call, they won't cover everything that you do, but you'll get some kind of coverage an event's coming up or, or something like that. And they may do, they won't probably won't do a feature every six months story about you, but they'll do one maybe every year or two. And that's, there's value in that. Okay. So you've okay. got your press release, you got your um, five W's, all the information you need to tell your story. So then you decide, how am I going? You send it off to media and see what happens. And uh, then you control your own social media, right? Um, I'll get to your question, Jonathan, at the end of this uh, page. The, uh, you've got your own social media. You can put it anywhere, all on those. Obviously you follow their rules. Even on Facebook, you don't, you put a link to your, to the press release that you put on your um, website um, uh, after you say this, WCSU is offering a new online master's degree in Homeland Security. Find out more here. You can put exclamation points in social media. Don't do it in your um, press releases, all right? because they'll be taken out and most media people, reporters and editors don't like them. It's just against the newspaper style. So um, you'll get along better with them if you don't put them in in the first place. And so unless somebody says, sees a meteor falling from the ground and you quote them saying, oh my God, then you can put in a, uh, a uh, exclamation point. Uh, you obviously put, you're looking for content for your your website, right? <clears throat> so some of it is an explanation of what you do. Some of it is photos of what you've done. And uh, you can have a category for press releases that you wrote along with right next to the category for the news stories that were published online or on TV or in the paper. Uh, that helps people figure out that you're serious if that's a question for them. Blogs are another place. You can, in this case, you could write a blog about the um, Masters of Science in Homeland Security. But as I keep saying, it's kind of dry. So what I would do, and I'm planning to do, is wait for the first class to start uh, enrolling in this class and then through enrollment services or the professor uh, make a connection with some of them and find out some of their stories. Ideally, you know, you'll have somebody, I mean, the best story from a uh, news perspective is uh, somebody who was affected by terrorism, which of course is horrible personally, but newspaper, news people want that big story and that's how you're gonna get some, it will help you get coverage. Mm -hmm. So, 
person's affected by terrorism in some way, they decide to, they're going to fight it. And they saw this class was starting and they're going to take it and they're going to go run down the terrorists. Um, that's a pretty good story. You'll get coverage from that and uh, people will pay attention to it and you'll broaden the readership, right? Or the uh, messaging from beyond people who just want to take a course or a, a, a who want to get a master's in Homeland Security, you'll find other people reading that too. And you can't tell really what they're going to think about it, but we hope that they start saying, oh, that's an interesting program. I didn't know West Con would do stuff like that because of course, a lot of people do say that about us. Oh, there's a school in the backyard. Uh, no, my kid's never going there. And we, a lot of what we do tries to, um, change that perception, not by saying, hey, WestCon is the really great place to go, but by showing examples of good work that professors and students do here. Um, and get parents thinking about it as well as students uh, and grandparents. Um, all right, do you have any questions at this point? Oh, Tim, your question was, there's a lot of turnover in new newsrooms, which is absolutely true. So um, yeah, I find myself you know, introducing myself to a lot of people. In my case, it's a little easier for me because reporters call me saying, hey, I want a professor to talk to me about whatever their stories they're doing. And so I can con uh, con connect them and also ask them, oh, are you new here and blah, blah, blah. And so they remember me a little bit too. Um, but you're right, you got to keep an eye on that and uh, keep turning the soil and finding new, uh, creating new relationships. It is hard. And of course, I'm not, uh, it will sound disparaging, but it's not, I'm not trying to be disparaging. A lot of these reporters are like just out of school, they're kids, they know nothing about anything. And that's how I was when I started too. So, you know, I asked a lot of questions. I met a lot of people. I tried to find out more information, but a lot of times I sounded stupid because I didn't know what I was talking about and reporters have to do that. Um, but sometimes they won't know a good story when it hits them, when you pitch it to them and you'll have to do a little more explaining and they might be rude and you'll have to, you know, push through that. In fact, they probably will be rude. Many reporters and editors are. Uh, partly it's a function of their hair is on fire all the time because it's hard to put out a new product every day or now every hour. Um, so uh, their manners aren't always the best, but you need to put that aside so you can get what you want, which is publicity. Other questions? Nothing in the chat, unless anyone has one they want to speak about. Nope. Okay. Okay. So sometimes you get the baby giraffe and you get a really great story. It's, hard, it's easy to write that story. <clears throat> so you should always be on the lookout for that, either for yourself or for um, if you're a part of an organization, uh, the kind of story that will be more likely to interest viewers or readers. And you can't, they're hard to manufacture. They don't, uh, they just kind of present themselves sometimes. If you're looking for them, then uh, you'll recognize them. And sometimes if you're a, sing a person, you're pitching yourself, your own, whatever you're doing, art or whatever, you're gonna have to be, if you wish, you're gonna have to be, um, reveal yourself and tell something about yourself that you wouldn't normally tell, uh, go around telling people, you tell a story about yourself. And uh, that's worthwhile because you're trying to connect with people. And it's the kind of thing I'm looking for all the time. I'm trying to tell uh, the human, I'm trying to humanize the people I write about. <clears throat> so a couple of years ago, we have a biology department and a very good professor 
who Tom Philbrick, who uh, his specialty is going to the Amazon and finding river plants or water plants that live in the, the uh, rivers of the Amazon region, especially those that live under or thrive under waterfalls because there's something different about them. So he has that niche. And we've written about it before and it usually doesn't get any kind of uh, uh, bump for us because, you know, it doesn't, he, it's important that he's a researcher, that he can convey how to research sci a science in a scientific way to his students, his biology students. So we talk about that, but nobody really cares about water plants in Brazil. So, uh, you know, we keep plugging away. But last, a couple of years ago, he mentioned, yeah, I found a new species, which he does all the time. And I named it after my wife. And it happened to be like the end of December or early January. And I said, Tom, we're gonna pitch that as a Valentine's story. And you better get ready now to talk to TV cameras and reporters because they're gonna pick that up. And um, he said, okay. And so if you go to the next slide. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I tell it not so straight, it's not cut and dried. I try to uh, put a little bit of a flourish in it. So uh, headline is, pretty straightforward. WCSU biologist discovers perfect Valentine's Day gift. And I sent it out two weeks before Valentine's Day to give media people enough time to recognize it and to make their plans and to get it in before the holiday. If I had sent it the day before or February 13th, it wouldn't have been enough time. And they wouldn't have run it because you don't run Valentine's Day stories after Valentine's Day usually. So you see it put Danbury and then I, said, sorry guys, no matter what you were planning for Valentine's Day, it won't be as good as what Dr. Tom Philbrick did for his wife. So I tried to make a little joke out of it. When Tom read this, uh, I sent him the press release before we sent it out. And he said, Paul, don't you have to say something in the first paragraph about how I named a plant for my wife? And I said, Tom, I'm trying to tell a story here and lead people through it and you know, pique their interest. It's not a regular uh, uh, inverted pyramid uh, news story. And he said, oh yeah, that's right. So Newtown resident, Tom Philbrick, or Philbrick is a the Connecticut, he's a professor at Westcon. His specialty is the study of the biology, ecology, and taxonomy of aquatic flowering plants. And he spends many summers away from home pulling specimens from South American rivers, which is just kind of, um, it's not, you know, nobody cares about that, but you have to set the stage for what comes next. Last year, while exploring a small stream in Apama, Brazil, just north of the mouth of the Amazon River, Philbrook and a colleague found a new species of plant. The setting of the discovery wasn't particularly romantic, and I described this little scraggly stream that he said was about the size of the Still River in Danbury, which, you know, not dramatic et cetera, et cetera. For most of us, the plant itself won't inspire love songs. As described by Philbrick, the plant is, quote, distinguished from all other species in the genus by a simple pinnately lobed leaf, which is fresh, fleshy and undulate, which I thought was kind of funny because you don't say fleshy and undulate in most um, uh, normal conversation. To his credit, Philbrick says that nothing about the physical description of the plant reminds him of his wife, Paula Philbrick. Um, then I describe how he told his wife that he was uh, naming a plant after her. She's a biologist as well. She was touched. And um, another quote, if it wasn't for my wife, I wouldn't be doing this work, he said. She's a marine ecologist and she essentially gave up her research career for our family. She was home for 16 years raising our two kids. Without her encouragement while I was in grad school, I probably wouldn't have gone on to get my PhD. She continues to be one of my most trusted scientific advisors. So. That's the reason for the story, right? He uh, loves his wife. He explains uh, his um, love for his wife 
uh, in so many words and why it was important to him and to her that he named this plant after her. And as you can tell, I took liberties with this. I joked or I inserted a little humor into it um, that he would not have done and that I could have written this press release without any humor at all, but I thought that there was the opportunity there and um, that uh, uh, it would make it a little more readable. And as you saw at the bottom there on that previous page, Alice, uh, I put in the thing saying, call Tom Philbrick. He'll give you the uh, rest of the story or you, know, you could quote him, you can interview him for the story and plenty of places did. Can I ask, did they print it exactly the way you hmm. wrote it most of the time? Uh, it was very close. Okay. Um, uh, because in this case, I pretty much got the whole story. I got all the five W's. There wasn't a lot else to add. And I got a pretty good quote out of it, uh, <clears throat> out of him and added that. But they uh, did add some quotes. And I think a couple of them got a picture of him with his wife. We sent a picture of him with his wife at a, uh, somewhere down in South America. It wasn't a great photo. So they came out to their house and um, uh, interviewed, uh, took a their own picture. So that was all good for us. Yeah, because if that brings publicity to the university as well. Exactly, in a yeah. little bit different way. Mm -hmm. So again, trying to make people think, oh, Westcon, that sounds like a pretty good place without saying, come to Westcon, it's a pretty good place. Right. <laughs> <laughs> So this kind of story I can pitch to all the media. We send it out uh, to the Newtown B, to all the TV stations, to the local radio stations, to the um, News Times, which I forgot to mention is part of Hearst Media now. Hearst owns the News Times in Danbury, the Stanford Advocate, the Norwalk Hour, the um, Bridgeport, the Connecticut Post, New Haven Register, and a lot of weeklies up along around the coast, including the New Milford uh, Weekly. So when you get a story, when Hearst accepts a story, it is often printed in all those papers, which is almost all the papers in the state. It doesn't include Waterbury or New London or the Hartford Current. Um, but the uh, that's a lot of the state with a lot of people. So. Uh, it's, it reduces, instead of me trying to pitch it to each, to a reporter or editor in each of those papers, it goes to the local News Times editor, they send it along <clears throat> and um, it gets put in all those papers. So that's good. The, it's also a good candidate for a blog if you decide you want to blog on your uh, website. For a lot of you, you know, you do blogging for search engine optimization. But for a lot of you, I believe, people already know about you. They're already going to your website. They aren't going to other websites because to look at other artists or other dancers or other bookstores, uh, they know about you and they want to know what's going on with you. So SEO isn't, in my opinion, and I'm not a marketer, quite as important. Uh, blogging does help you tell your stories. And if you're an artist, you can tell your own story. This is who I am. This is why I do art. This is why I do what I do and why it's important to me. And I think that's a good thing to have on your website. Uh, you know, a reporter, um, it does help reporters who um, get a press release from you. If they decide they wanna do a, per, a personality feature on you, they will go to your website. And that is a good way for them to learn more information as well as interviewing you. So I'll answer any more questions. If you think of things that you want to uh, talk about afterwards, please don't hesitate to email me or call me. That's my cell phone number. I have two emails, one here at Westcon, my own and my own email. I um, am happy to talk about writing. I, uh, uh, I'm passionate about it and I'm happy to help anybody, any of you uh, figure out how to present yourself communicate what you do in writing. Um, it's important. And it, if you do it right, it will help you. 
Thank you. That's that, that's really great advice, Paul. And I like the idea of kind of bringing in the personal aspects to it to make it interesting. I think that's really, um, so that's a very good point. There are some questions here in the chat. Would you like me to read them so you can yes. respond? Um, you. First one is who are the four core reporters of news stuff that you mentioned? At the News Times? At the News Times, maybe. Yeah. So there's Rob Reiser. He does a lot of government type of things. Um, and there's Julia Perkins, who does, she covers, some, they all cover towns as well as Danbury, but they, uh, she does a little school related stuff and um, some of the little bit softer stuff, some of the features, although Rob will do that too. And she's, I really like Rob Reiser. Julie is a little easier to talk to. If you're making your first phone call into the News Times newsroom, ask for, or do it with Julia. And she's an assistant editor too, and very easy to work with. The, uh, there's Kendra Baker covers New Milford. They send their reporters all over, but she's a lot of New Milford. And there's somebody else that I'm trying to think of. I don't talk to a lot and I can't remember her name right now. But uh, Kendra and Rob and Julia are all very professional. Rob's a little older and has been doing news work for at least 20 years. So he's a little rough, hard bitten. So um, he doesn't, uh, <laughs> when I, I don't push fluffy stuff to him and sometimes I do have fluffy stuff to pitch but he's not interested in the fluffy stuff. He's more hard hitting and is more likely to be the one who will come over if something bad is happening at cam on campus that I have to talk about. Okay. And with that information, I mean, to find out who those people are, like you were saying, they're, they're, prob they're on the website, probably websites and mm -hmm. in the paper itself. Well, yeah, I would go to the website, newstimes.com. It's a free website and there's an about section that'll tell you who they are and what their uh, emails are. Okay. If you can't find it for some, if it's not there anymore, call me or email me and I'll send it to you. Okay. Um, also, we offer an interactive version of our press releases online, which usually includes headshots of our team, more detailed visuals, maps, videos, etc. Is there any value in doing that? Uh, absolutely. I think that's... Um, uh, the more information you can put out there today uh, that you control and that you provide, the better able you are to communicate with uh, the community out there who will have some, um, uh, who wants to get to know you. It used to be you could, not so much video, but you could just, as I said, go to the News Times or your local newspaper and get publicity. It just isn't that way anymore. They're, they, they'll usually do calendar items, but there isn't um, a larger appetite for uh, uh, all the things that we do, partly because they don't have the room and partly because they're running around trying to make sure they don't miss anything big. Um, so we have to create our own uh, media outlet. And it sounds like you have a great one. Video is very important. I don't, you know, I don't do video, but I work with the videographers and, uh, you know, it's another way to engage people. Um, sometimes videographers say, oh, the written word is so passe, but I disagree with them. You still, it's still a good way to communicate uh, to a lot of different people. Um, who are looking for information, but also people like in the media who want to uh, get information. They're much more likely to read a press release than a video. Okay. And for social media is, I mean, my question, Paul, like there's a lot of social media outlets that, that just publish on social media now. Are those worth reaching out to, do you think? Like there's Unlocking Connecticut. I know that's one that I'm thinking of or. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think so. The, 
um, they'll spread the word for you. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're trying to do is spread the word. Probably a lot of the viewers or people who engage in Unlocking Connecticut uh, may not be your the people you're really trying to connect with, but right. it certainly doesn't hurt, right? Okay. And it, it's hard, not hard to send out a press release. The hard part is uh, figuring out where you want to send it, tracking down their email, making sure you got it right, putting the, the um, introductory message in, making sure you haven't forgotten to attach the uh, press release as a Word document or put it in the body of the email. And um, so just give yourself time to do that. And in a couple of hours, you'll hit everybody you want to hit. Okay. Hamlet yes. Hub is another one that I think it's online only. It's a news, <clears throat> more of a news-based type of thing, but they uh, most of the time they don't do their own reporting. They re they print our press releases. I think they have a fairly high readership. And sometimes if something appears in Hamlet Hub, the News Times will pick it up too in other places because they don't like being scooped. Um, and they'll say, damn it, I, we missed that. Or damn it, Paul Steinmetz didn't send me that. And I did, but they missed it. Um, every once in a while, I did wanna say that uh, if you have a relationship with a out, an outlet or a particular reporter and you have a big story, um, it's okay to call them up and say, okay, I've got this story. I'm going to give it to you at 9 a.m. tomorrow. You can publish it. And a half hour later, I'm going to send it out to everybody else and we'll put it on our website. Um, so uh, if you act quickly, you'll get scoop because that's still important in um, media, news media. Um, and you make a friend of that reporter. Mm. So don't be afraid to kind of put the word out there. Oh yeah. In any way. You know, we didn't talk about bad things that happen, but at, the new, at Westcon, bad things happen sometimes and we got to talk about them to the media. We have to put it out. We have to explain what happened or to the extent we can or express our remorse or whatever it is do the whole story. And um, it's important to not run away from that, but to go and tell people everything you know and to get more information that you don't have and release that when you do, et cetera. Okay. I mean, most of you won't be in that position, but if you do, if you are, and you're wondering what to do, call me and I'll uh, talk you through it. No, no charge. All the people on this, uh, um, <laughs> I'm not charging for you. Well, that's a lot of great information, Paul, especially the reporters to reach out to and developing relationships. I think this is all very important stuff to remember, you know, right now, because there's, there's so much going on right now. It's an exciting time to mm -hmm. connect and get the word out. And I think people are looking for it. So it's, it's worth the while. And this is, this is very helpful. Um, so I really appreciate you being able to share all of this information to everyone. It's my pleasure. I, as I said, enjoy talking about it. Yes. Does anyone have any other questions before we wrap up? We all good. Okay. Thank you, well, everybody. Thank you, Paul. And as I said, I've recorded this, so I will email it out to everyone. And if, um, I put my email in the chat. So if you have any questions for me or for Paul, um, you know what I'll do? I'll put Paul's email in the chat too. And uh, you can just uh, let us know. Email us, Jillian, reach out. Looking, We're here yeah, to help. I'm looking at the chat and um, um, Jillian pointed out Curry Angle is Brookfield, which is right. And I've worked with her before and she's oh, okay. from the News Times. Yeah, so if you want, you know, any, um, like even email me or to you, Paul, just if they want those names, um, yep. just to look up, you know, reach out and, and we'll get those to everybody. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good Have a wonderful evening and an almost weekend. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Bye now. Bye now.
Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you, yeah. Paul. Really appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm happy I could do it and um, we'll keep working together. So yeah, it's fun. And I'm glad I had this up. To, I'm sorry that first I didn't realize that I had to do the host so you could share it. So it worked out fine. <laughs> it worked out okay. Yes. All right, good. All right. Thanks for your time. Yeah, okay. my pleasure. Thank you. All right. Talk Bye -bye. to you soon. Yes. Bye.